most of which are about rocks and ice at sub-zero temperatures in a vacuum. Rather boring. However, on a small damp rock, there is a story that bears a second look. It's your story. But the first four billion years or so mostly concern amino acids. Not much of a page turn. But then, over time, the amino acids bond together, and things start to get interesting and a bit drier. A certain subspecies of hominid discovers that you can do more with a sharp rock than annoy your little brother. Tools and weapons are invented. The hominids begin to cooperate. Fire becomes a servant rather than an unpredictable force of nature. They learn to tan the skins of animals for clothing. They learn ways to record and probably exaggerate their adventures. Eventually, these tribes learn to build shelters and immediately hold the first barbecue parties. This is the dawn of humankind. Struggle and cooperation have been rewarded. The Neolithic era draws to a close. The whole world beckons. This tribe has come far, but the rest of their story is your story. You are the one who will build them into a great civilization. How far will you push humankind? A new era, a new epoch. While your tribe looks to you for leadership, the weight of all those future, unborn generations also weighs upon your decisions. What sort of lives will they have? Hey everybody and welcome to the Salty Show and I hope you all enjoyed that intro and welcome to Humankind. A game I've had for a while and I've only done about one playthrough of it but I felt it was time to give it another go around after a couple updates and uh, to expand the horizons of my channel. I enjoyed my first playthrough of it, I felt it was fun and I wanted to uh, give you all a go for it. Now, welcome to the Neolithic. The Neolithic goal is your first objective is to survive the Neolithic era and earn your first Aerostar. Aerostars are measure your achievements in the game. We will cover them in more detail. So this is our little unit here. It's a hunting party and all we do for now is uh, we move. We have a huge world to expand upon. So let's get going. Let's keep searching. I do have tutorials turned on. I hope y'all are doing well today. And uh, we're going to get through some of them. Uh, so we have right there, we can discover that actually. We move. If you do enjoy this episode and this turn of events, do like and subscribe as Delicious. always. Though next time, it might be better if you watched it first. So we found we got plus 15 food, which is good. Lots of open terrain here. Yes. Ooh, there's an animal there. Right. Acknowledge. Uh. Right. Oh. A world of flame. In the distance, a thin cord of smoke cutting cuts up the clear of the blue skies. Fire, calling a few tribes when you run closer. The smell of centering bark and burning pine grows stronger with each footfall. You spy dancing flames and suddenly find yourself on the edge of a settlement on fire. Many of the structures are ablaze, but even with the smoke and flames, you can see these abodes are marvels of craftsmanship. You are about to direct your men to put out the fires with loose soil, where when you see short shadow figures running away, youths, they come. They could become part of your tribe if you give chase now. But that would mean losing the secrets of construction. What is your choice? So we can either chase them. Raw numbers will help us more building techniques at this time. New army, refugees is added to the party. Understanding how to build stronger settlements will be vital in the future. 25% on city defense research. We're going to go with extinguish just to learn the use. I mean, we're a hunter-gatherer group taking on more people than what our family is currently. I feel would be a, a mistake, especially if we just barely caught them. And we're going to go up here and look at Just this. Just because a culture died out doesn't mean it wasn't worthy of study. We found a curiosity. We found something over this way, too. Oh, oh we don't need that. Thank you. 
Uh, more food. And we go down there, actually, and we get even more food. Ooh, we don't want to actually run into that. Nuts. There is an achievement in game, actually, that, uh, if we don't fight anybody, we'll get that. This way. What's over there? Your has enough influence to found its first outpost. Tell you what, setting an outpost in this area doesn't seem too crucial. We have a new event. Seed of an era. Yesterday the tribe came across a vast trace of wild grain. The stalks swaying in the breeze like the wind playing over a golden water. The ground down grain could feed the tribe twice over. But one of the tribal elders has another idea. Instead of pounding the seed and flowers, she's just planting half of them so the grasses may return next summer. It is a curious idea. It is a curious idea. At wild odds with a nomadic life, but perhaps a harbinger of the future. What should you do? Plant? Must begin to harness the natural rhythms of the world to seek a better life. 25 domestication research or grind plus food on city. We're going to do domestication research. There's lots of terrain out this way. We're on some form of hill. There is water here, but a rocky field, nonetheless. Accidentally ran into something. Oh, it's a bear. This is your first look at combat here. Sadly, the bear had to die. Very well. Now it does appear to be there is a lot of water here. Settling in right here might be good. Oh, hello. We're just gonna... These children need care and shelter. A new army and growing tribe next. We'll do that one. And we'll welcome them. Yeah, go back that way. So we've we've encountered we encountered a new another group of people. I'll tell you what though. Seven food there and ten. We need to get access to the port or a eventual port as well, and it's at the base. Oh, 
Oh, we'll have them go that way, actually. A new curiosity, and we are founding a new settlement. Or a outpost. Outposts are the the pre to uh, cities. The last winter was especially hard to the ground hard, and the, frost, the frost chilling to the bone. In the heart of the settlement, the tribe huddled close to, stick, to share warmth through the coldest days, but for some it wasn't enough. Some needed to get their blood flowing, and they found means through violent games. Grappling, fighting, contests of strength and endurance. One contest where opponents fight with hide-bound fists have gained quite the following. What do you say about this? We encourage negative two food, but 25 experience on creating units on all cities. Forbid and codify. And make us more military based. I do agree the toughening of the tribe might be important. Instant resolve that, revolve, uh, resolve that battle against that creature. This way. Gather food. A first outpost means a first step into a new territory. And a new extension of your empire's power, but also a new vulnerability. We have now settled quite. There's lots of lots of other settlers over here. This way. The shift to fixed abodes hasn't been easy for the tribesmen and women who had settled the outpost, but they'd preserve or preserved and now thought of the land as home when they discovered that one of their number had been hoarding mushrooms that he'd found in a nearby cavern for himself. It was a great blow to the spirit of the tribe. Now they want to banish him for his greed, but that would mean being deprived of the location of the mushrooms. Big banish, city defense costs reduced, protect or retain. To science or to city defense research. That'll be nice in the future. This way. What's over there? My future. Continue exploring. Bloody and smelly, aren't they? History may be changed by battles, but that doesn't mean they're enjoyable. Oh, so we're just gonna go. They always oh, took the high ground there. Them on the uh We're winning now that we've given given the high ground. Oh, it was a, a draw. Our brave, our brave tribe of the south fell, but eliminated them entirely. We'll keep exploring this way. This coastline goes on forever. The wandering people in our land. Oh, this area looks really fertile and nice. Let's 
set a new outpost up there. Someone else has discovered the Great Barrier Reef. There we go. We've unlocked the Aero Star. Now we can move forth, I believe. Yes. It's been a while. I do apologize, everybody. We're going to get through this one step at a time. So, culture selection. Historically, empires have grown from both their ideonocracies and the diversity of cultures they have encompassed or come in contact with. In humankind, you get to combine cultures to create your own empire with more than one million possible combinations. And here are obviously the cultures. The Babylonians, the Hittites, Mycenaeans, Zhao. A couple of these have already been taken, or a good few of these. So we have four to choose from. Babylonians give us a lot of science benefits and a defensive warrior. Armed and trained to fight in exchange for access to temple owned lands. They're anti-cavalry and they're guardian. Hittites, we get a uh, far more war focused and a fortification building. And they have a heavy cavalry unit. Mycenaeans, which are the proto Greeks, they get a uh, brutal upbringing, 20 unit cost, 20 experience, Cyclopean fortresses. And then the warrior is the Promachi, which is driving from a virtue meaning to fight on the front. The Promachi are inspired by champions chosen to fight on the front line. They're melee and close combat. And then the Zhao. Oh, sorry. I scrolled. They give us a heavy cav uh, unit. Just a charity tier, it looks like. Confucius School, which gives us stability in science and stability. Harmonious thought. Which ones do we want? Minus 10 stability. Uh, scientist gameplay orientation focus on science and research militarist empires I do believe early on military should probably be our focus but the, I do think though these units are really good they're just not 21 strength these men are 22 but they offer doing when they offer close up range and fighting the first half. I think we are going to go with the Mycenaeans. Illust Illustri illustrious warriors have the whole earth for their tomb. We shall be the Mycenaeans. We are now in a new era. Do obviously pause if you need to read those. Uh, I'm not exactly letting them go by. Yeah, we won't fight that deer. No reason to. The tribal is like a you stand at a crossroads. For many moons, the tribe has trekked the wilderness slowly, towards really learning the secrets of this world, how the materials hidden in deep places and in plain sight might be fashioned to the tribe's advantage, how the beasts and plants of the land and seas can be most fruitful harvest, and how myths and stories can graciously become inescapable and give the power over our greatest enemies, other tribes. Now you must decide in what domain the tribe will truly sharpen its knowledge for the ages to come. The makers only lack imagination. Limit what we might do. Adds wattle and daub, which is plus one industry per population on city outposts. Adds plant lore plus one food for per population, or astronomy plus one science. Uh, we're going to focus on the wattle and daub legacy trait. Ah, the challenges of a young civilization. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel, 
and you don't? Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. Now we need to find some Trojans for you to either trade with or vent your wrath on. Welcome to the ancient era. We're now militaristic. Actually, I'm building a bridge. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted. We need a couple more fame points. Iron reserve. The military you can infinity action is called iron reserve. Select one of your cities and activate iron reserve to immediately raise a full militia army. The size of the army is determined by your current maximum number of units per army. Okay. So iron reserves. So we get to call upon militia. Well, that's cool. Cool indeed. So our scouts will set to... Not that. Oh, that one. Where is the other one at? Here we are. We can try and use them scouts to ransack that area, maybe. And now we can actually evolve this into our first city. Do we want to do that one or this one? Well, that one is taking its time, actually. My bad. Yeah, it has another 11 turns before it's created. A city means shelter for those Welcome who to need my it. Keen. A place to store food. Pens for the pigs. It may not be glorious, but it beats sleeping under trees. I do believe they're right there. It beats sleeping under trees. First step of business. Let's see what we want to do. We don't need any more scouts. Cyclopean Fortress 20 to District Fortifications. It would be an immediate pause and would give us some benefits there. Covering our northern or our western entrance, and it'll only take 10 turns. Let's go for that. It'll create stability. And now we do research. So, if you haven't guessed it yet, Humankind is very similar to uh, another grand strategy game known as Sid Meier Civilization. Uh, both very enjoyable games. Both very they have their own aspects. I I enjoy both of them. I enjoyed Civ Five more than I did Civ Six, I believe. But Humankind is a little, definitely in its own right, different. Lots of things they could do depending on who you are, but uh, it is enjoyable for sure. And we're gonna get city defenses. It's only a five turns due to our, I think, our previous researches. We're gonna end the turn. Have them explore down this way. Our scouts are getting valuable knowledge. But do not fight the mammoth. City defense has been restructured. We have the new warrior unit. Next up, I believe, the calendar would give us obviously the artisan's quarry and a granary, which I believe is probably very important. We can do that right 
right now. I think once that's done, we can attach it. Yeah, the Mycenaeans. The agrarian Harapans. You're as likely to meet their canals and farmers as their soldiers. Ah, so we've encountered a new a city. For you. Or a new people, Think the Harapans. A request from a friend is not a thing to be taken lightly. So there, there are things to get into. I think we'll accept this, this deal. I am content to join together on this. For now. A cause, a celebration. For now, we'll be friendly with them. The Harapans are strong. And we haven't even built our fortresses yet, so we don't want to get too crazy. Forget how you uh, actually remove units or how you eliminate them. Or disband, here we go, yeah. We'll send that one unit back to disband them. We don't need three scouts in this one area. Osmosis event, your civilization benefits from proximity to others. Technological osmosis. Ah. Booster, if you dismiss that offer, you will earn. If you dismiss that offer, you will earn an instantaneous. Uh, at least we'll just research that. Oh, we discovered the, oh, the Mio Forest. I don't know how we missed this on the way in, but we found it. The Harappans are to our north. Oh, they have their, their capital is here. And it looks to be on a mighty hill. Oh, we have car carcasses. Over this way. Keep exploring. We have unknown people to our west. I'll tell you what, actually, let's go up here and try to settle an outpost. Up and over. I researched the calendar. Oh, we discovered a great barrier reef. Guided by the constellations, ancient people have navigated these colorful fissant waters for generations beyond count. So it is a natural wonder. And it looks uh, like a natural wonder. Very cool. It's time for us to research. Which domestication is looking like the quickest. That's what we go for. 
Wonderful, and it had been locked. I don't know what that is, but oh well. That's interesting. I don't know what that does yet. So there's a little island there. First visible mark of this new culture. I hope the style is pleasing, because it will be around for as long as the city lasts. Aha, there we go. The Cyclopean Fortress has been built. I'm not close to can manage to exploit all resources, deposits. And this so this outpost has now been created. So, with that, extracting resources, resources are actually occurring, ones with culture, economic interests, empires set up access to resources by constructing the outposts in the territory. Okay. So there's a way, you all will have to bear with me, there's a way to... There's a way to attach outpost cities. I've yet to figure it out how. But here I am. Oh, is it already attached? It might already be attached, actually. We currently have one, one pop. We don't have enough to actually uh, get a unit going yet, but. That'll generate some quick income. We don't really need much income, but it's only six turns, so. Oh, there it is. Oh, so it's not close enough yet. That'll give us an immediate income boost right there, which is good. to our north west are very fertile this whole coastline is this will give us actual benefits when it comes to the military this will give us crucial benefits actually domestication carpentry is next Come for the views. Stay oh, Mount for Vesuvius. Come over here. Oh, and we researched carpentry immediately. We unlocked our first era star of the ancient era. See, so once you're past the Neolithic, you do get more era stars. Uh, multiple era stars. You have your top one here, which gives you the most fame because of based off your culture. Then you have 
in rank the next ones expansion aesthetic builder scientist merchant and agrarian and it goes on this one will change this these six will not their value all the values will but this one will change uh, based off the culture you choose so with that they are pretty close to where we want them we're 50 turns for all these next ones Think. Uh, masonry will be next. Sorry, there's a lot of sanctuaries up here. Let's go. Oh wow, we need a lot of influence to do that. only the worse the further you get out so the northeast is unclaimed oh <laughs> you are being cornered by a lot of animals Oh, no. I'm afraid they've already eaten all the bread and the cake, and now the pantry seems empty. So this is a good example of uh, we're not f pet feeding enough of our people. <laughs> this is a good start. It's a lovely start. So we've reached the top of the map of here. Time for our people to come home. Oh, we're about to lose one pop in one turn. That's not good. Did lose one pop there because I didn't move these guys. We should have done that earlier. Oop, did not mean to do that. Oh, a new civic. Let's go. So civics are a whole different thing where we decide the way our people actually like manage. When voting a civic, you can choose either options, but each path might affect the empire in very numerous ways. And then we have influence to choose. We don't have enough, we always come back later. Founding myths, by what right do we rule? We claim inheritance and dominion over the land and beasts. Our supremacy is ordained, for we are the chosen few. Which plus three faith on territory, Puts us closer to social than, or uh, on the social bar, puts us closer to tradition than progress. Natural right, it puts us closer to progress, which I think that'll Why be was better. Why this even a question? Let's keep it simple. We've been here. It's our place. And then legitimacy. 
Yes, Mary Laws. Historical precedents and traditions serve as a bias for our judgment, which has put us back on tradition. 50 costs to create outposts, or 20 costs to on attached outpost costs, absorb city costs, which this will help later, way later on, and pushes us a little further in the progress. Just imagine. Once you discover writing, you can literally throw the book at them. <laughs> there we go. Oh, the Harapans are spreading like wildfire down here to the coast. The music, the beautiful game, it truly is a wonderful, scenic experience to take to uh, partake in. Now, this time we'll be smart. We got that, that's good. With that, we should actually produce enough. Oh, down there, that's seven there. Destroy that. Yeah, focus on farming. For now, we'll focus on that. One more in turn. We've gained another population. Which I think, yeah, we'll keep him in construction. Order our people to keep going home. And we have another civic. Independent people. How should we use other people? Mercenary armies, why let our own blood be spilled when we can pay others to fight? And mercenaries are 50% on higher army costs, 50% on assimilation costs. This, I think, will put us in a... So it takes us to the homeland choice or the world. Materialism for reasons against other people, etc. The world, the choice is taken in of cooperation, humanism, universal, and some for reasons of unifying groups. Hiring armies would be beneficial. But being able to... Our empire will become stronger by opening our arms to new communities. I believe this one makes the most sense. They may have more to offer than just their weapons. Assimilation does seem practical. And on that note, everyone, I'm going to draw today's first episode to a close. I hope you all enjoyed the first intro to Humankind starting off and, and i hope you guys are excited to see where this goes i'm not entirely sure if i'm gonna release this yet but if i do i do hope you all enjoyed it and if you have like and subscribe as always and tick that bell icon to be notified when i post videos like this and or others but uh without further ado thank you all for doing this all the show stay salty peace out <laughs>